is in charge of the National Soil Survey and Monitoring, and Antonio's presentation this morning is Soil Health in a European Context. So over to you, Antonio. Thank you, David. I hope you can hear me, and I try to share uh, the screen. Uh, I hope it's this one. Is it, is it okay? Yes, we're, we're, we're yeah. seeing your screen, yep. Yeah, but then I wanted to go to the, sorry. Okay, is it, do you have my? Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, good morning. Um, I, I prepared that, uh, that, uh, that presentation with Jack Faber, and Jack is uh, unfortunately unwell today. So I will take over the, 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 the presentation. So we discuss with Jack and also with colleagues from the Serena project. So the Serena project will be presented later. And so, um, so uh, first of all, um, uh, SIREN stands for stock taking for agricultural soil quality and ecosystem services indicators and their reference values. So what we did in, uh, in SIREN, because as, uh, as, as um, David already said, uh, this project is finished now. So we, uh, we, we made a stock take of uh, uh, soil data uh, for the assessment of soil quality in EGP soil uh, in partners. So we stock take the existing indicators and the reference values. We also develop a framework to link soil quality to ecosystem services. And so we also provide uh, consistent definitions. And we proposed uh, also an harmonized and tiered um, approach to set uh, a minimum data set to, to monitor soils. Um, so we, uh, we provide that it's a top-down uh, indicator selection. So I will explain that later. And we also identify the knowledge gaps uh, and, the, and the, the coming needs. Uh, so first of all, a few definitions as we are the first presentation. So uh, within Siren and with colleagues from, from Serena, we define soil health as the current capacity of a soil to function as a vital living system with natural or managed ecosystem boundaries and land use boundaries to sustain plant and animal productivity and health, maintain or enhance water and air quality, and to further provide ecosystem services on long term without increased trade-offs between ecosystem services. So that's the main definition uh, for, for, for soil health. And so the, the, the main term is the current capacity. I will explain that uh, as a difference with the soil quality. We also define the soil fertility, but I will not go into details because I suppose you will have the slides. And uh, within the SIREN and also uh, SERENA, we define other terms as uh, soil functions, soil threats, for example, like system services. So you have a blue list of the of the, the terms we define in uh, in the in, in the two projects. So I will I will just uh, focus on on the differences between soil health and soil quality. Uh, so for us, um, soil soil health is the current situation, whereas soil quality is the the capacity the the, the capability of the soil to deliver the ecosystem services. So there's a difference between the 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 capacity, the, the capability, sorry, that is, uh, that is linked to the context and the, pro the soil properties and the land use. So it's a potential, uh, it's a potential uh, um, furniture of uh, ecosystem services in a sustainable way, uh, meaning that you can increase that potential, then you, you may be not sustainable. For example, if you use fertilizers, pesticides, uh, intensive tillage, you, you can increase the capability of soil but you may have uh, trade-offs then. And uh, so that's the, that's the quality. And for soil health, it's the current situation, meaning that if you have uh, soil degradation, bad management practices, then you, you, uh, you will not uh, deliver the, the whole uh, ecosystem services. So that's the main difference. We, that's the difference we made between soil health and soil quality. Then an other definition, we will talk about indicators for or during the, the webinar. So for us, indicator is a single or a set of variables to represent or infer a specific aspect of soil health. So the indicators can be measured using analytical protocols, but also estimated through modeling or expert-based approaches. And then they can be quantitative, semi-quantitative, or qualitative. 
And we also define uh, evaluation criteria. So you will find different terms, a reference value, target value, or threshold value. And then a reference value, it's, uh, it's let's say, the, the normal background value uh, defined in uh, local circumstances. So it's, it's linked to, to, to local situations. And it, it can be considered as equivalent to the, sometimes it's also called a normal operating range. A target value will represent the desired status of a particular indicator or set of indicators, meaning that you have an objective, so you have a target. And finally, the threshold value is seen as a value above or below which soil quality can be considered to be degraded. So, so uh, these are the, 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 the first definitions coming either from Siren and Serena project. And then, uh, in, in, uh, as I told at the beginning of, of the talk, we, we, uh, we did a stock take in, in Siren and we stock take the soil quality indicators used in member states. So we, we made a questionnaire and we asked uh, the, the member state uh, what, what kind of indicator they use to, to monitor soil quality in their countries. So, um, so these are the, this graph is uh, representing the, the, the results. So as you can see, uh, for example, here, uh, soil organic carbon is, uh, is very common in, in the countries. Uh, indicators also dealing with the soil nutrients and also with, uh, for example, chemical degradation. And mainly for chemical degradation, for example, it's, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you see my, uh, my, uh, I think you, you see. So for chemical degradation, for example, here, uh, it's mainly uh, trace elements, but no, no, no organic contaminants, for example. And you, as you can see also biological parameters, biological indicators are not, that used uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the countries. So that's the, the, first, uh, the, the first point. So the top three are carbon, texture, uh, and, um, and also uh, nutrients, uh, meaning nitrogen and phosphorus, for example. And then we also ask, uh, so, so, uh, so largely missing biological indicators are not used in, are real, rarely used in the, in the, in the um, EGP soil partner country. Uh, we also ask about the, the criteria to interpret the, the, the results. If they use, if they have a reference, threshold, so reference will be in blue, threshold in red, and target values in, uh, in green. So uh, here you have a, a big table with the countries, the lines are the countries, and the columns are the, the, the categories of uh, uh, that are indicated. So soil organic carbon is the first one, and you see that, yeah, we have mostly uh, reference values, and, and in some countries, we have, uh, target values. Then you also have the, the, for example, for the nutrients. So for the nutrients, you have mostly also reference, and in some countries, target values, so in, the, in, the, in green. And then nothing more or less about physical uh, uh, analysis or biological or analysis or indicators that are related to, to water content, for example, or physical degradation. But uh, we have a lot of threshold values for, for chemical degradation so in, in different countries, and then quite nothing about biological indicators in, uh, in, uh, in that table. So you see, we, we mainly have, uh, let's say, reference values for organic uh, matter and also nutrients and threshold values for, for chemical uh, degradation. Then we, uh, we propose also a, a way to select uh, indicators and those indicators should be, uh, uh, should be selected according to the, to the land use uh, objectives. So we, we start with, a, we propose a top-down selection. So starting from the policy needs, for example, here you, you can have different, different policies. Uh, for desertification, climate change, food security. And then based on that, we define the needed ecosystem services to, to, uh, to, uh, to cover those policies. Then the, the functions that are behind those ecosystem services, the soil processes behind, and uh, then the, 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 the soil structure. 
And this is soil quality for us. This is the, the way we, we define also soil quality. Uh, so delivering ecosystem services based on the use of, uh, of soils. And so, uh, for example, here, if, you, if we start from uh, policy needs, uh, let's say on, on, on climate and desertification, you can, you can end with several possible indicators. And for example, you, you can end with the carbon concentration and bulk density to measure carbon stocks, for, for, for example. So um, this, uh, uh, this way of selecting the indicators is, um, is not well defined yet. And so we also propose to, uh, uh, to, to maybe to, to have a guidance, to develop in the future a guidance. And the, the, there is already a guidance to, for contaminated land, for contaminated soils to, uh, to, to, to characterize uh, soil, soil contamination. So we propose also, we can also develop a sort of a guidance to select the, the, the indicators. The policies we consider uh, are, are those in, the, in that uh, table. I will not go through uh, this table. So that this table was made with, with the colleagues from, from Serena. So you can see that you, you, you have different indicators here in, the, in, the, in, the, in that table. And you have different uh, documents or policies or that, are, that are referring, that can refer to that indicator. So I will not go uh, into detail on that uh, on that uh, on that table. So that's the starting point for our selection process, and then we apply that selection process. Uh, so we we select uh, EU policy relevant uh, indicators. We also, based on the stock take we made, we also uh, look at the at indicators that were used in more than fifty percent of the member states. We also. Uh, filter uh, looking at uh, what are the indicators that are proposed in the scientific literature and those that are already applied in European projects. And so uh, with all those criteria, we end with that minimum data set of indicators uh, that can be used to monitor soil quality across Europe. So you see, uh, we have uh, indicators for physical conditions, so texture, porosity, and bulk density. Indicators for soil fertility, uh, carbon concentration, total nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and pH. Uh, we have, uh, we, with that, we can also uh, evaluate uh, erosion. So we have indicators also for salinity, for contamination. And others are missing, in fact, we, because we need other contaminants, soil biodiversity, and water regulation, because those uh, those indicators are requested in policies, but they are not yet used in the in the member states. So yeah, they, they didn't appear in our first year, but we think we need to include those uh, indicators reporting for other other sources of contaminants, soil biodiversity and water regulation. Uh, okay, for for biodiversity, we should in, introduce also. Uh, a structural and functional biodiversity, but this will be also the, the matter of the talk of Stefano uh, late in the, in the morning. And finally, we also identify the, the challenges, the coming challenges uh, for implementation of policy. So we ask uh, to, the, to the member states, to the, to, to the EGP soil partner, we ask what are the, yeah, the, the, the gaps, the knowledge gaps. Uh, so we ask in green, it's for research. And, uh, and in, uh, in brown, it's for governance. And so if you look at the top three, for example, for, for science, for scientific uh, uh, purposes, then we lack of harmonized uh, definitions and methods, methodology. So we hope Sarah can provide a, a basis for that. Uh, we need also to understand the key processes uh, that are linking, uh, in fact, uh, soil quality, soil health, and ecosystem services. And so to translate, to incorporate soil data into the ecosystem services context. And for the top three for governance, then it's, uh, uh, well, in, in a lot of countries, we are lacking soil quality monitoring, in fact, and monitoring networks uh, have been stopped. So we miss data. We miss data to, to report on the local scale. So we need also to regionalize and the, the prioritize uh, and prioritize soil functions. And there will, a lot of uh, countries also reported the missing, uh, they are missing resources to, to, to do that. 
And so to conclude, uh, Siren can be seen as a starting point. It was a, a, a huge stock take across member states. And so the, 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 the other projects and activities of EGP will build on, on, the, on those results. And so uh, the main outcomes of the, the project are now in a policy brief that is available on the website. And uh, on the website, you will find also the, the, the full report and also a, a video presentation by, by Jack Faber of the, of the project. Uh, so thank you. And uh, if you have questions. Thank you, Antonio, for, for setting the scene and, and um, presenting, I suppose, the, the challenges, but also the solutions um, that, that um, uh, the projects are, are developing in EJP soil. So I'd invite anybody to, to that, that, that wants to ask questions, um, please either put the questions in the, in the chat or uh, raise your hand at this point. So just, uh, I suppose we have, uh, we have Leo, uh, Leo, if you want to, to unmute and, and, and ask the question, please uh, do so. Yes, hello, uh, thanks uh, David and thanks Antonio for the presentation. So I'm, I'm Leo from DG Agriculture, the policy officer for EJP Soil. A very interesting presentation. Um, I had a couple of questions. Maybe you could go back briefly to the slide with the, from, from the beginning with the different concepts, uh, soil health and quality and capacity. Can you see? Uh, yes. what, can, yeah. what, can, you, can you see now the... We the see slide? the PowerPoint, yes. The PowerPoint. That one, yes, thank you. Um, I was struggling a bit to to make sense of that um, quickly, and so far as it seems to suggest that uh, you could actually have soil quality that is higher than than soil health in some sense. If you follow, yes, that, that's our point. In fact, the soil soil quality is more linked to the capacity or to the capability of the soil to to deliver ecosystem services. And uh, soil else, we see that as a, uh, as the current status of the. Or, or if we assess the soil now, it, it may be below that that, that capability. If it's on uh, if it's on LC, for example, then that means that you will not deliver the expected uh, ecosystem services according to the to its context, to its, to the soil type, to the land use, to the climate, for example. That, that was the idea. Hmm. That soil else is a, is a it's let's say it's a, an instantaneous uh, uh, picture of the of the of the situation. And if you if if you if the soil is degraded, then the capability you, you will not reach the the potential uh, the, the capability of the soil. Uh, I hope I'm clear. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's, I, I more or less grasp it. Also. Um... This is definitely out of my depth in terms of uh, scientific background, but in terms of communication, I wonder whether it's not still a bit counterintuitive because quality people, I think, would associate with something uh, positive, whereas um, you seem to be saying that at a certain quality level, a certain quality level could actually be unsustainable. And I don't think this will be easy to communicate. Uh, the, the, the idea is that that uh, the, the the quality is also linked to the, the to the provision of ecosystem services in a sustainable way. You are not pushing. In fact, you can push, but then you will have a, 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 you 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 will increase the provision of certain ecosystem services. Let's say biomass production, for example, uh, if you fertilize and if you use pesticides. But then you will have trade-offs. So mm -hmm. the, the the quality for us it's uh, it's the uh, it's in a way a sustainable um, provision of ecosystem services. Okay, I'll have to dig deep more deeply uh, into this. Clearly, uh, one one yeah. other quick question, if I may, about the uh, call for more guidance uh, or yeah. standardization. Um, have you been following this in, in terms of what's going on there at ISO, for yeah. example? And we, we, uh, there's an ISO group 
that I'm, that I'm living, in fact, uh, at ISO, where we are defining, we, we are trying to, to define uh, the, those terms. So the developing guidance, we, are, we, we just started. There's an ISO group with two working documents now. Okay, thanks a lot. I can, I can give them the, the, the references of the two documents. Yeah, please do. Thank you, Leo. So, uh, and Luis, you have your um, hand up as well. Yes, thanks, David. Uh, referring to the, the slide number eight, I think there's a very interesting and a good point in order to facilitate the science policy communication. And um, I mean also to highlight a sort of uh, economy on reporting and economy on uh, on um, preparing the the calculation indicators at national level national level you mentioned that the um, I, I suggest to better explode explore and uh, blow up this uh, uh, the connection with uh, the un systems reporting system you mentioned the, the uh, please could you please uh, put on the on the screen a slide eight and uh, you mentioned that uh, you mentioned the uh, the the convention the certification and climate change and uh, i would suggest also to add this, uh, the the biodiversity but the, they just they just uh, they just prepared a list of indicators think that includes the carbon the soil organic carbon and uh, but to explore and and uh, also on the sorry on the sdgs uh, there is also land degradation and also in the ccb there is land degradation not only the certification because the meaning is much more uh, open now to, uh, for the convention from desertification to land degradation, considering desertification the the, the last the, the maximum level, level of degradation. But I suggest to have a sort of a, of a, I could say a translation or a scheme where the indicators are uh, um, I like where the uh, um, homogeneity homogeneity of indicators are highlighted. So not just the general mention, but also uh, as, uh, a sort of, uh, of uh, guidance to, um, to have the, the similarity or the uh, homogeneity. It means also, it means econ economy on, uh, on uh, monitoring, as well as more efficacy and uh, uh, usability of the, uh, of the indicators. And uh, you know that from the political side, it's a very in, uh, important. I yeah. hope to be a winner. Thanks. Thank, thanks for the suggestion. And that's also what we are doing within the Serena project, where we, uh, we try to identify the indicators uh, and link those indicators to different uh, uh, international policies or strategies. So that's what we we are doing now in in Serena. Yeah, yes, I know, I know, I'm following the Serena, but uh, this is a uh, 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 maybe it could be a bit a bit more uh, articulated uh, and and, and uh, becoming not only a enunciation, not only mention this, but also giving them uh, operability. Uh, they giving them a good operability. Including uh, metadata data, so I need. I know that Serena is working on this field. I am following Serena and Serena team. That I'm so thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we're 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 going to move forward with the next presentation. Now we will.